Welcome back to our newest edition of What Teachers Have to Say. My name is Jake, also known as Mr. Carr on the Web. And I'm Nathan, also known as 90s Mail on the Web. <laughs> awesome. And we are wrapping up a three-part mini-series today mm -hmm. um, called Honor the Lineage. The first episode was pretty painful where we really talk about um, building relationships that were meaningful to us as we were coming up and students. And then part two is more about how do we pay that forward as yeah. mentors. Um, and now part three, we have an incredible guest, the very first guest on our podcast it's like it's like a milestone like, need, like, like a little like, pin like a little badge you need a you know earn your we wings learned we learned things we learned things so yeah. we have uh, i'd love to introduce to our listeners um the incredible Brittany young Brittany is a colleague of nathan and mine um here at our school i would say high school but you um work in k-12 yeah. the entirety of yeah. the spectrum that today we didn't even know that <laughs> and so, um, Brittany, we're very grateful that you're here to talk about some of the incredible things that um, that Brittany does to help build a community and to build a space for all these other things that we've talked about, this importance of relationship. Yeah. There's a vessel that is actively being created, um, and Brittany and her team um, are very actively working in that. So... Mm -hmm. Um, welcome, Brittany, to the yes. episode. I'm Brittany Young, and I'm not, I don't have a handle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not on social media. That will be discussed yeah. later. But um, yeah, I love just the conversation we had about how intentional this has to be and how purposeful. And I just, I, I think this is a good one for anyone who's who's th thinking about, like, how do we do this? This is, this is important. Um, there's a lot of things in here to take away. And we had a lot of fun. We yeah. had a lot of fun. <laughs> you get to learn some uh, very vulnerable things about all three of us. Mm -hmm. I know I cried again. <laughs> like, ah. You played a game. <laughs> we played a game. Yeah. We did. We played a game. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. You'll, you'll enjoy this experience. Stay tuned. <laughs> all right. So on our last conversation, we were talking a lot about um, just the way that we've passed on our, well, everything that we've taken in as students of right. great mentors, right? And then passing that on to our own students that we are mentoring, that we resonated with, and that we were able to build really strong relationships with because of how us as people fit together. And I think, like, you know, we talked about how crucial that is, where you need to be able to be yourself and you need to be able to be a beacon for students and you need to be able to be seen and that your humanity should be a part of the classroom because how else are you going to build relationships if they're based on something that's a performance or something that's inauthentic. So we're really exploring this topic and I would really like, I really appreciate your perspective on this because you are dealing with the most vulnerable students that we have. Uh, you're dealing with students that are really genuinely struggling in, in very real ways. Um, and you're on the front lines of the mental health crisis that we're in. Um, so yeah. <laughs> where, so how about, where do we start how about with a, relationships? How about a soft lob yeah. to Brittany? Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I do. I want to pile in there, Brittany. Yeah. I'm just so grateful that you're here today. I mean, you're yeah. the inaugural guest on yeah, our podcast. And like, guest. what a better Very way special. than Brittany. Yeah. I mean, we haven't known each other that long. I think two years. Mm -hmm. This is our going second on going years. on two years. Mm -hmm. Not, yeah. And yet, um, I just, I value our friendship. I really value being able to pop up near the front office or see, you You know, you're carrying chess boards or, <laughs> you know, you're walking through with a bag of candy or, yeah. you know, that a kid gave you, things like that. I just really, I really want to, um, I want to publicly honor the beautiful job that you're doing Thank you. in education. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a long time since I've been at a school that values, um, that really truly values diving in and putting resources behind mm -hmm. the lip service of mm -hmm. we care about mm -hmm. our students and we want to build them. And yeah. so the fact that that you are part of our team, that we all get to work together, is really special. And I just really appreciate you. So. Thank I you. want you to know that. Um, but you do. I love that Nathan brought it up. You work with some of our most vulnerable students, the students that are 
on that cusp of really failing both academically, emotionally, whatever that is, whatever crack they've been allowed to fall through, I feel like you're that layer um, that helps catch kids. And also, I love what you've been doing. I feel like I'm talking so much already, but I love um, that you're really working towards not even letting them hit the crack to begin with. Mm. That's the goal. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. So you mentioned um, just in our chatting, so, you know, we introduced you and you're part of the wellness team at our yes. school, which what a cool thing. Like if you're at a school out there, like get a wellness team. Get a wellness mm. team. So would you kind of help us understand what is the wellness team? I know that's not the only thing you do here. Maybe like uh, give us a little recap. Um, let our listeners know the beauty that is Brittany Young. So it really starts with the beauty of our community and our school. Uh, I've known you guys for going on two years because mm -hmm. I started out at a role in the front desk. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that yeah is, right. And that's a whole other yeah. story and filling Lisa's shoes when she was out. Right, and just, yeah. I came here not knowing anything about our community and was at the front desk. So you talk about front lines. Yeah. And I was the person expected to answer all the questions and I knew nothing about this really unique setting that we're in. <laughs> yeah. And so over the like last year when I was here, I interfaced with everybody. I saw every student, teachers, family, admin, like anyone who walked through our door, I was the first person that they saw. And so I loved the role, but my background is mental health, it's school counseling. And after some time, I really got to see the pulse on like where our community was struggling, like parents, staff, teachers, mm -hmm. just, there were some voids and it wasn't to anyone's fault, but because my my nature is in caring for people, I just felt like I needed to see if there was room for me to, to wear that hat a bit more yeah. than being at the front desk, even though the front desk carries so much of that. And to, to bring people up to speed that may not have heard other episodes, when you say like finger on the pulse of trauma, finger on the pulse of mental health in our area, our area is mm -hmm. densely impacted by mental health. Education in general is, Tensely. but the way that we've gone through wildfires, through mm -hmm. a dam breaking, mm -hmm. you know, through our, our area is the highest ACEs scores in the nation. Um, yeah. And so you're not just seeing the post-COVID mental health crisis that we're all in. You're seeing, you know, years, years, our, years our, our seniors. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, like what, fourth grade, fifth grade is when things started really falling apart mm -hmm. for them. So it's been yeah. years of patterning. <clears throat> so I, I interrupted you, I apologize. Well, but. it's it's an interesting perspective that I had because I was new to Chico. Like I came here in June of 2020. Whoa. I started working oh, here yeah. in the 21, 22 school year. Yeah. And so I knew about the things that this community had gone through. And obviously I knew what everyone experienced during COVID, but I had this kind of new lens, like having not been through it. Sure. And so I think this community, there was a sense of normalcy with the trauma. Yeah, and I right? saw hmm. like, this isn't normal. <laughs> right. And we're all really struggling. And so I just kind of started asking around about like, is there room for me to do more than I'm doing at the front desk? And as so happens, you know, the <clears throat> the wellness team was expanding and wanting to fill a role. And it's like, I want to apply to that. And so everything just happened that way. And so although my background is in school counseling, I was very particular about not being called the school counselor mm -hmm. because I also noticed that there was a negative connotation with what that meant. Yeah. And the, <clears throat> the people who were part of the school counseling, the mental health, the wellness team were on the same page as that as well. So we're called the wellness team, yeah. but we're made up of school psychologists, social workers, and counselors. Um, and so my title in the high school is the wellness and achievement counselor because right. I try and kind of balance this counselor coach approach where when I meet with students, I kind of say like, if you've ever had experience working with a counselor before, you know, typically there's this problem that you've arrived at and it's not, you know, something's not working for you. And not all the time, but typically in counseling, you can spend a lot of time unpacking what got us to this problem. So we have to have room for that. However, this is where like the achievement part comes in. I want to talk about like, where are you trying to go and what barriers do we need to remove to get you there? And sometimes that's changing habits. Sometimes that's just creating systems. Sometimes that's setting boundaries, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to get them out of what's not working and being able to see potential 
and also see what it's going to take within them to get there. And I say, this is not easy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not here to make you feel comfortable. I'm here to make you feel supported and step with you along the way on this really hard journey. Um, but it does require being able to meet people where they're at and see them beyond the grade or the title as student or child friend. Like there's just this human who's hurting and struggling. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't even know what they need, but they know they need something different. Um, yeah. So that's a little bit how I got into the role. My, I'm technically a school counselor, but I'm part of the wellness team and the wellness and achievement counselor here. And it is a huge privilege to be able to meet individually with these students who need something different, yep. something more. And but building that trust takes time. Yeah. Right. So why don't you share like sure. some of the you do so many cool things. I I dare I don't I have no idea everything you do. Yeah, I'm not even. I, I would I would never anymore. believe it. <laughs> I, I mean, everything from like lunch activities to homeroom things. Like, why don't you share some of that toolkit? Because I mean, I would hope it has been so successful at our school. Hmm. I would hope that someone out there would take on the reins and be like, oh, we could build a wellness team like that. So why don't you share kind of what you do? Yeah, so a lot of it is, a lot of what it looks like this year is in response to previous years, you know, getting feedback on what worked, what didn't work. And so mm. this year has been a whole, a little bit of piloting, like new structure, new ideas. And so some of it's gonna stick, some of it's not, um, but some of the things I do. So the lunch groups we did twice a week, um, just social groups, it was open to anyone. It wasn't, right. you had to be, you know, referral based counseling. It was just anyone who wanted to socialize during lunch, let's do it. So on Tuesdays we did, well, I called it the midday mingle. Yeah, yes. yeah, and yeah. 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 I remember that, that was, um, excuse me, my, my lips are like quivering. Um, <laughs> With excitement. <laughs> it is exciting. Yeah. Um, we, it was the highlight of my week every week to just offer a space for students. And all it looked like was literally, I brought some board games you can come and write your name on the paper to say you were here mm -hmm. and we played games, but we barely played the games that I brought. Everyone was like, I want to teach you this game. Let's turn that game. And now all my personal games are the ones that I've learned from these students. Whoa, and I love that. What was really interesting about it is that part of the intention was post COVID, mm -hmm. just bringing in opportunities for people to socialize in person. Mm -hmm. And we've lost that skill. But right. And we have to a certain degree, but what I found was that they just needed the container. Mm -hmm. It was so like, I didn't have to do yeah. anything, but create the space. And the yeah. students were connecting. They were teaching one another. They were laughing. They were connecting outside of the group. And I was like, well, <laughs> they, like no, they didn't need to be taught anything. They actually right. just needed the space to, needed to do it. Like a, like a build it and they will come type of a moment, right? Like yeah. And although the group was actually intended to be specific for um, like students who were referred, like these students need extra socializing. Right, but right. Because of how we do, we're very responsive here at our school and very adaptive. And so we were able to just meet them where they were at and open it up. And eventually we did, um, we did board games on Tuesdays at lunch and chess on Thursdays. And um, just, I don't know, that was one of the things we did, yeah. the midday mingle. Well, and be before you share the next one, um, you know, without getting too personal, there have been parents that have responded how grateful they are for mm. that midday mingle, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. they they saw their children struggling, they saw their children not making connections, not making relationships, and then, you know, we all know there's there's a beautiful moment when oh, yeah. people decided that they were friends yes. verbally, yes, yeah, right, and like yeah, yeah. and and we've met, I've met both of their parents, and how grateful they are for just that simple thing of like my child was seen, mm -hmm. my child was given a space to make a healthy relationship. That was, I, I, I was worried after that moment happened where these two students who could definitely benefit from a social exchange, sure. social learning, just they naturally connected and became friends. Yeah. Like I was like, well, then we're done. Like why, mm -hmm. how can I go better from here? And mm -hmm. it did continue to grow and get better, but, um, I appreciate knowing that parents value it as well, because mm -hmm. like you said, there's things I do that you're not even aware of. Right. And that's the struggle where just people don't know, like I'm in this hallway and it's hard to be interfacing with students because I don't have a class and I don't have a right. roster. And so. So you went from being front desk where you see yes. everyone all day 
to being in this like other private. role that's yeah, like, more like more focused on what you were doing at the front desk yeah. but then back down this hallway it's literally like the one thing i miss most is like i'm not at the front desk yeah. seeing everybody mm -hmm. deciding to make this move was not easy but it was right. so right it was the right thing for me to do mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of things that i do that just no one knows about and students, not every student even knows that I'm here available right. to them. And that, that's a big challenge. That's a struggle that we have of how do we, how do we be more visible and more accessible to students? Um, I do think that those who have interacted and engaged with our programming have, a, have helped us address the stigma. Like, oh, okay. I think the stigma okay. is less than it was before, but, and you can't totally control that. But, no. Right. Um, what else do I do? I meet with students individually. Mm -hmm. I meet with parents as needed. Um, we host, so I'm K-12. So every month we host parent workshops in the K-8. Wow, K-12, yeah, I mm -hmm. thought you were just high school. Yeah. We have Whoa. coffee with the counselors, although we're okay. probably gonna change the name for next year. Um, those have been very well received. That's those hmm. are a lot of fun. Just the parent engagement piece. It's harder to get parent engagement in the high school level. Yeah. That's oh, a huge yes. goal. We're always fighting that. Um, we actually had a <laughs> county wide event that was publicized through the county on all of our social medias, oh. everything. And um, one parent signed up, and it was a director of our school. <laughs> oh my gosh! And so that's a big goal, but it's oh, hard to put energy man. there. Yeah. It's, Outreach. It's a big one. I would yeah. love to have more parent engagement and involvement. It's just, you got schedules and competing demands. And I understand that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And sometimes I think we forget to engage. Like I've just been thinking about like the way I listen to podcasts, the way I watch videos, mm -hmm. I rarely comment. Mm -hmm. and, and so, mm -hmm. you know, like filming a podcast, being mm -hmm. on social media, I've started purposefully like leaving a comment, mm -hmm. leaving those things. Right. And so sometimes I wonder like, do we just need to be reminded that it's okay to interact, yeah. you know, or encouraged mm -hmm. to interact. So, Hey, so Hey listeners interact. There you go. You got a comment? Please leave something. No. That'd be great. Leave, leave a comment. I think for me, yeah, I always like, there are some like pretty large YouTubers or, or like people that I follow that I appreciate what they're doing. And I do really rarely leave a comment because yeah. I'm like, Oh, this dude has, hundreds of thousands of followers there's no mm. like there's no point of me leaving the comment you know right and so i feel like maybe it, it, but i just am applying that to everything so yeah. it's like even smaller creators i'm like ah, i don't need that why would i leave a comment but it's actually whenever i do usually the creator right. will get right back to it's like thank you so much for it. and it's like yeah. that's okay so there is community there i think we've been so like there's something about being online or being visible online that is like weirdly alienating and I don't think um, it has yeah. to be, you know. Well, and, and we, you know, like we know how important community is. So like this mm -hmm. mini series that we've been doing, right? Yeah. We started with like us as children sometimes and the mentors that, you know, reached out to us. Yeah. And then us as mentors, but those are still one-on-one. -on -one, those are still yeah. kind of private face things. Face to face. Um, yeah. But we know that that gets... I don't want to say tiresome, but like that will only go so far. Right. Your sphere of influence is smaller. Yeah, exactly. And like, that's why I love that you were able to come in today and, and help us unpack this, the greater picture of like, you know, the microcosm of individual relationships with teachers and the way we treat each other and colleagues mm -hmm. and students and all that stuff also has to fit within a container mm -hmm. of community which you're you're building like you're an active community builder in I, our school it's on, on a personal level like i i believe that like one of the most important things that one should always consider or two of the most important things that someone should always consider are who you spend time with and what you spend your time doing hmm. or thinking about that's it that's a doing yeah, what we think about sure. is a doing yeah and building community, establishing relationships, connecting with people is just extremely important to me. And as I was thinking about this opportunity here, I was trying to reflect on where that came from. Like, why is this so important to me? And um, I'm in therapy right now. And yeah. my goal in therapy was to understand my role in things. Hmm. And 
somewhat what is my responsibility in this situation or what is my role in this outcome that I've created? And I've learned that, um, well, I've always known that relationships are important to me, but as a parent, that my son was seven days old when I really realized that no matter what we do, we can't control for the story that our children make up. You know, I, I can, mm. and which we've done as adults, we make up these stories about our parents and the things they yeah, did. Sure, and they're so, legends to us, really. You they know. they were something else. And Definitely in my, legendary. Legendary. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I just I, I have my experience of that, and it is what it is. But I'm trying to honor their experience as parents, and so I can complain and be upset. But I realize that in my childhood, the friends were the family that I made. Sometimes, mm-hmm. yeah. like I had, I, I chose certain people mm-hmm. because I needed something in them in my life, and I think that's where I really started to value relationships. Hmm. And that's not to say that my parents weren't providing or they were absent in my life, but I actively chose certain people. And I reflected on like, who were the people in my life who guided me and um, intentionally or unintentionally. And so just as a human, not even as a counselor, as a educator, relationships are extremely important to me. And just everything I do, I want to make sure that I'm contributing positively to a relationship. Yeah. Like if you work relationship or friend relationship and so things like aloha, things oh, like Oh yeah, tell us um, about your aloha days. Alo- so that comes from my father-in-law. So good. Um yeah. going to Kauai was a tradition of my in-laws, uh, the island of Kauai and hmm. at some point uh, years later my father-in-law just decided to bring Aloha Friday to his school. Hmm. And he brought some coffee beans, a big giant coffee urn, and brewed coffee in the morning and just sent a message and and invited people to hang out in the staff room. And people loved it. And it was just a thing he did. And my in-laws and my husband and I worked in international schools. So my father-in-law did this in various countries around the world. And other people have brought it to other countries that they went to. And so... It's just something that we do as a family. And so I brought that here. But since there's no school on Fridays, yeah. <laughs> we had one Aloha Friday and then we yeah. eventually have Aloha Mondays now. Yeah. Right. But it's just, it's Hawaiian music on a record. It's, I send a weekly message out that's just inspirational or positive based on what I see in our community yeah. or just some, whether it's music or mm-hmm. a book, just some kind of inspiration. And then um, some people bring coffee or donuts or treats mm-hmm. and we just, it's just a weekly, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like, I see you. Yeah. And you see me, and mm-hmm. we're here. And there's no intention other than to just spread aloha. Yeah. And mm. yet the responses I get vary, you know, but I'm every week I'll get some kind of response from somebody that, like, mm. it touched them in some way. And yeah. it's so great. And I remember you mentioning one time that even there's people not at our school that are on the newsletter. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah. they just they want they the just newsletter because yeah. it is they like want some positivity. Uh, I don't know what your what your cycle is, but I feel mm-hmm. like you usually send it out like Sunday evening, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and there have been so many evenings where I've read it, mm-hmm. and um, I'm like mm, I'm like vehemently protective of my personal time, right? Yes. I really am. Like I don't mm-hmm. take my bag home, like all these things. But there's something really simple about reading your messages. They're always just long enough, mm. right? Yeah. Like they're a quick snippet, but they mm-hmm. have enough meat to them to be meaningful. Mm-hmm. But it kind of like turns my thinking away from the weekend. And I, mm-hmm. it's like I start preparing to embrace my professional life again. Really cool. I've really, I've yeah. really appreciated yeah. it. Yeah. Same. And then like your haikus. <laughs> oh, those are fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, didn't get as many responses this year as I did last year, yeah. but asking people to send a haiku about Mondays. Mm-hmm. And um, I eventually had posted them all over our staff room the year later after we received them. And mm-hmm. it was just really cool to hear different people's takes. Some people think Mondays are awesome. Some people dread them. And um, just anything to really inspire expression and connection and positivity. And I, I just, I, although this isn't the intention, I love like when people share their personal connection with it, like this one, yeah. you know, like that was a, your take on this was different than anyone I've ever heard. And it's like so meaningful. And that wouldn't happen if we sent it on a Friday. No, like I wouldn't read it. Yeah. So that really <laughs> is reflective true. of our community. And um, <laughs> yeah. So just 
establishing relationships and honoring our time. Um, another thing I really believe in is that our, we have finite time and infinite choice. And mm -hmm. if we don't choose how we spend our time, it will be chosen for us. And I see that a lot in students where oh, they yeah. just, oh, yeah. their time is, is just given to yeah some kind of media yep. and you're not going to get that time back. I know. And sometimes they realize like, uh, and so like you can choose what you do with your time and you've, you're choosing this and it's taking you to this outcome that is not working for you. Like yeah. it's also a habit that we're going to have to change and it's so hard. Yeah. Um, but the, because those are the things that I really believe in, it just, it lends itself to this role. Yeah. And I think there's times where the community we have needs to change. Mm -hmm. And Definitely. knowing how to establish your own community is really important. Mm -hmm. And we don't learn that. No, we don't learn. And, no. and <clears throat> communities always are in change, right? They're always constantly evolving. And I love that your take, if I'm reading it right, is, okay, if it's going to change, we can nudge it in the positive direction instead of you know, falling, like I think about like things fall to chaos, mm. right? If we don't mm -hmm. infuse with power, they fall to chaos naturally. Um, see, this English teacher knows a little bit about hey. thermodynamics. Come on, hey. physics, here we go. <laughs> Second law, here we go. Um, but, um, and, and then I was just thinking too, like I wrote a little note, I was thinking, you know, you've got your, um, your midday mingles, you've had your time at the front desk, your one-on-one -on -one sessions with students and with parents, mm -hmm. these wellness events, you host um, like little what, workshops during homeroom that yeah, kids can sign up series, for the wellness series. We just series. had our last right. one of the year yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And it was awesome. Again, this was a new structure that was kind of tested out this year. Yeah, and we learned, totally. we learned so much from it. Um, we had 30 minutes to kind of touch on a subject with the students who decided they wanted to come. It, yeah. was, it was open to whoever chose to be there. Sometimes we'd have 20, sometimes it would be four. And 30 minutes really means 20. And it's so hard. Like these topics yeah. are huge and they're really yeah. important. And there's absolutely no way I can really have anything sink in in that amount of time. And it was so hard. But... Our last one yesterday was one of the most attended and it just, the timing was great and we had jelly beans and it just, it felt so great. We're like, oh my gosh, like we've grown. And there's students who've come to everyone. Yeah. There's a handful yeah. who's come to every session. Yeah. And um, I definitely pushed it pretty hard yeah. to, to the kids that I, I work with. I was just like, if you have, even if you don't think that you need this, it's mm. still going to be cool. Like. You're going to learn something. It's going to be good for you. Yeah. And then the way they evolved over time, I we started them in the gym. Well, the intention behind this was actually, it's called a tier one support where it's mm -hmm. like school-wide, yeah. everyone has access. And the goal was like to do it in the gym and have like a hundred students. And big. I was like, dang, I don't know, what am I supposed to do with a hundred students in 30 minutes? Like during yeah, homeroom, they got to get wild. here. And we eventually was like, that was not working. So we... Yeah kind of borrow people's classrooms. And once we got into the classroom, it just became intimate mm -hmm, right. and people felt safe the space. and we'd have discussions and in a safe way where it wasn't super like vulnerable and we were like right. getting super personal, but it was mm -hmm. just a bit more intentional. And right. that shift was like, Hey, we have to have a classroom next year. Yeah. <laughs> we need more time. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's yeah. So this year I, I appreciate what we've done and the topics that we've decided on, but, it was really a learning year. And well, it has I, just, I love that. It was a pilot year. Mm -hmm. you know, you've mentioned it a few times and just that idea that you really hit students where they are in really different, you have so many different offerings for students, mm -hmm. right? Like, uh, I know, like, no more melting pot, right? We're a salad now. Mm -hmm. Like, we get to maintain being a tomato, <laughs> but now we're a salad, right? And I think that that's so important when it comes to community because you have those kids that, I'm sure you've got like your little besties, right? Mm. They're there all the time. They high five you. They say hi every time they see you. And then there's the, the next tier that's like, I tried it out. I've been to two mm -hmm. type of a situation. Mm -hmm. um, so I just love that, uh, you know, and, we, and we've brought it up in the, in the other episodes of this yeah. um, series. Like everyone's different. We don't want to homogenize mm -hmm. that. No. We want individuality and... And community 
is that? Like, we can't right. homogenize community and say, like, well, you don't really fit what we're looking for, so you need to either fit us or move on right. or just yeah. be outside the community. Yep. And the work that you do and the wellness team and, and just the whole team here at CORE, I think, really tries, you know, infusing power into that, actively mm-hmm. working to maintain autonomy within a larger scope yeah i mean i think like being inclusive is an active thing yeah it's an act act you can't just say like yes we're inclusive and we have this these are your options philosophy (laughs) of it it's just like no you have to actively invite the outliers of your community Mm -hmm. into your community yeah um without making them change without saying this is the way you have to be it's like no this is the way that you are. And here are some options for you to do things maybe that would work better for you. But you, you yeah, I feel like the push to fit in mm. is still like such a struggle. It's something you have to fight against all the time. Um, it seems like culturally almost, we just want, to, we're getting to a point where it's like, everything is so hard that homogeneity is what's comfortable. Mm. And so like just being around people that are exactly like you yeah. is the only place you feel safe. And yeah. that is hugely problematic. Right. I am I was just telling someone this morning, a colleague who I love dearly and connect with just on a regular basis on a personal level and reflecting on students and learning where we are as a society. Um, that's Adele. Oh, and I love her. Adele. Adele is awesome. She's, She's new a new, new hire this I'm year. Home. Actually, you know, like all of, you're actually the most OG here of anyone we're talking about. Yeah. I was hired full time last year. So that was the first time I actually spent a lot of time here. Yeah. And this is my primary thing. It's Brittany the same way. So we were like, mm-hmm. oh, hey, you're new. Yep. And then uh, and then Adele's new this year. Yeah. But she's killing it. She's a incredible How human. can you not love Adele? Yeah. And you know what? Right? She uh, Adele Harris, by the way. I had my eye on her office mm-hmm. when I was like, uh, I knew there was no space for me. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, are there other teachers? Mm-hmm. I don't have to be in that office. Got a big window. Yeah. So when I found out I wasn't getting them, like, who's this Adele? Like, like <laughs> taking my office. Yo. I was like, who does she think she is? She's Ooh, new. Uh, She's taking the big room. Yeah. And like, I love her. And I, we have these in-depth conversations. And I was telling her today that, you know, we're talking about relationships and how people connect. And this year, putting on my counseling hat again, I kind of hate the internet. I just like, yeah. I see this, I love the internet and technology. Sure, it's both things. It's it can be sword. both things. I see the danger of it mm. with students oh, and yeah the degree at which their brain is and isn't developed Mm -hmm. and it is catastrophic. And when it comes to being around people like us and connecting, it's, it's just so false. Mm -hmm. It's this one image of something that might be. And, but now I'm telling myself that this is real. This is how I'm supposed to be. And when I'm actually existing in the real world, I don't know what to do. I don't see myself reflected in others. Yep. Like it just creates this paralyzing life experience. Mm. And I, I, I really struggle on how to get ahead of that. Um, and with, with counseling, it is about relationships. Like I'm building a very specific type of relationship with this person that I'm working with one-on-one for an extended period of time. We meet for a half hour every week. Sure. Um, sometimes a little bit more, but we have to establish trust and honesty and vulnerability. Mm-hmm. And that takes a lot of time with yeah. some students. Yep. It takes a very long time. And then we have these expectations around change and how quickly that should happen. And I'm, I'm still working on them trusting me with this yeah. process. Yeah. And so again, like I think just as humans, there's these, there's these dynamics and experiences that we know are vital to survival, to growth, but we live in this world that is like so against that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it, it, it does feel like a constant battle. And there's days where I just have to tell myself, like, I'm planting seeds, I'm planting seeds. Like, yeah. I will never see the outcome nope. and right. I can't control it. Um, but it, if, if I don't remind myself that I'm planting seeds, 
the day to day feels like I'm not doing anything yeah. or there's this time we're not going to get back. Like yeah. maybe something else should have been going on this whole time yeah, and just right. self doubt. And, but you just have this young person in front of you. And I've always saw young people as like flow. I was asked a couple years ago at other school, I was asked to start a student leadership program. Okay. So we're not talking like flow the dino no. lady, right? Like <laughs> No, no. <laughs> flow as in an acronym for future leaders of the world. I just oh, was dang. like Because That's at the end of the day, what? like no matter like every young person is the future is the future yep. and they're going to lead something mm -hmm. like whether they choose to or not, they're leading change in their choices. Like, so every time I'm sitting across from a young person who's struggling with something knowingly or not, I'm just like, this is the future. And like, I have an opportunity to create connection, have this lineage and I have no idea where it's going to go, but I just hope that every word I say and how I choose to say it is creating meaning for them and yeah. trust in like, maybe I'm the one adult they can trust in their life right. or maybe something. And yeah. so mm -hmm. it's, that's a heavy part of my role professionally because of yeah. how important this is to me personally. Oh yeah. Yeah. And like, oh gosh, Whoa. that opens yeah. up a whole other a whole conversation. Other thing. A whole other thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, yeah. Something you said made me think like, uh, you know, the, that lack of connection that technology has brought, right? Like we've been more connected than any other time in history. Yeah. And in terms yet, of our communicative ability. Yeah, we have, the, um, we have more ability for connection. Yeah. And yet we are less connected. It almost needs two time. different words. <clears throat> it does. The, the connection that takes place over the internet and with you know, email, social yeah. media, whatever you want to call that. Like mm -hmm. it is something and mm -hmm. it is a type of connection, yeah. but, but it is so different. different. Like, mm -hmm. and we're I, calling it the same thing and we're feeling like we're doing the thing. Yeah. And we need a actually word moving for away it. From it. If somebody out there knows yeah. a word for it or wants to make up a word for it, Please. let us know. You know, just because of how my specific age and coming into the internet in the innocent days, of the internet, of the, the MySpace days, of the, <laughs> the dial-up dial days, of those early of of uh, uh, you know AOL Instant Messenger, all all of that. Actually, it was so much more innocent, and so much the internet was like it hadn't been completely co-opted by marketing, right. really, mm -hmm. and, it, and and so there really were like these little niche communities. Like chat rooms, live journal, my space. shout out live journal. Are you <laughs> aware of live journal? <laughs> no. Oh man. I live journal like was amazing. It was like this, just, you were just, it was the journal on the internet. That, it was like pre blogs. Yeah. Pre blogs. But like it would, you would have little communities around mm -hmm. it. And some of the people that I actually like met on there, like I still know to this day mm -hmm. that it was just like, it was, you know, you, there was a lot of vulnerability there and it was because you could, you had just so much space to kind of write things out. And then it was this weird moment in cultural history where people were willing to read mm. other people's sharing their vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that there's like potential for it, especially in really niche communities to connect on the, on, on the internet in a very real way. But I do think that it's not the norm and that it's, right. Everything else that is on the internet now is speaking right. so much louder than that. And it's absolutely it's instant. Yeah. Whereas we've become so instant, you know, the instant gratification. Yeah. Things yeah. have to be quick and digestible. And so right. when you have this like, here I'm pouring my heart out, here I'm expressing myself, here is my mm -hmm. my live journal. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. but it's like, but I have all these other things over here. And mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's not Yeah, you, you know, you lost them. makes me think Simon Sinek kind of gets a rad a uh, rad a bad rap in education because of his find your why, mm -hmm. which I think has just been, yeah, it's just it's been bastardized and, and pushed. <laughs> yeah, it's not what it is. We should know what our why is, but don't ask me in a staff meeting. Yes. Um, <laughs> but he was kind of, there was a, you know, a sound clip that I heard from him. Uh -huh. um, he's the one that kind of woke my thinking up to the shift that happened. Like when the millennial generation began in the workforce because mm -hmm. that's when we kind of saw like uh oh mm -hmm. wait a minute like maybe there's a disconnection happening oh yeah communication problems and the two things that stuck with me that uh resonate one is um how easy it is to just cancel plans mm 
mm. right? That, that we lose that ability to look forward in the future. Mm. But also that, um, more importantly, that relationships aren't built over text. They're not mm. small one-off things. That what he said, you know, his his thing that he talks about is it, you know, relationships in a workplace happen in the boardroom before the meeting when you lean over to your colleague and say, hey, I heard that your dad was ill. Right. How mm. is that going? Mm. You know, right. um, <clears throat> and so maybe moving on, like we hit the surface of relationships all the time, texting, chat, mm-hmm. TikTok, you know, all yeah. of these things, just surface level relationships. But it requires an active vulnerability to mm-hmm. dive deeper into that you know when we when we share i just told my students we're reading the little prince and i said Mm -hmm. you know the author antoine de saint Supéré, really peeled back his skin to write this book and i think that's why it's become so meaningful because his pain his experience Mm -hmm. resonates with us um and i know you brought an activity for us i did i do have an activity i like to bring this almost everywhere I go. This is from um, something called The Skin Deep. Oh, I think and, it's um, Yeah. To be honest, I don't know if they're known as The Skin Deep or The And, but mm. I'll read you what the card says and then I'll explain Sweet. how this works. And we'll put a link in the show notes so people can find it. This is yeah. really cool. Yes. And this is just like one aspect of what they provide. We are The Skin Deep, an Emmy award-winning creative studio that explores human connection amidst a constantly growing digital landscape. Our purpose is to offer experiences that deepen relationships, stimulate conversation, and spark exploration of our humanity against an ever-changing backdrop of the world around us. And so that's what they do, and they do it in a variety of ways. And one way is through these cards. So there's like these little decks of cards that you can get. And um, <clears throat> there's just a variety of them. And one way that I like to do this um, is just bring them with me. Oh. This is the stranger's deck. So they have family, like romantic partners, self, Actually, best I think I have the romantic partner one. It's They're like so good. It's black, I think, mm-hmm. versus the yellow yeah. one. Yeah, yep. I do have that one. And so this is the stranger's one. So all of the questions are very um, intentional, but they're not like private Mm -hmm. or like the best friends one, like might be kind of private. So I don't carry that one. I take that with me when I see my best friends, but (laughs) I brought this to like picnics and restaurants. And if you like connect with someone like, Hey, let's do the cards. And it's Uh, always really cool. Um, Okay. So the way it works is you pick a card and you look at the person eye people. contact is important right mm-hmm. for this whole yeah. exercise where you just like really look <laughs> like it's okay to be person, uncomfortable person's eyes yes yes yeah. yeah. it, so typically it's two people yeah. but we can do this together as three and um so you pick a card you read the question to the people and they answer it okay um you listen are we both gonna answer the same question or how you want to do it yeah go, okay man. so okay i'm just kind of mixing up some cards and I will ask I'm, you. I'm afraid for some both reason. Okay. This question. <laughs> what do you do? Oh, this is really great. Okay. <laughs> what do you do that detracts from the relationships in your life? Oh. <laughs> My wife's out there typing right now. She's like, oh, I can answer that. <laughs> no. She's going to interact. <laughs> Engage. I think I leaned back so yeah. hard I fell out of frame just now. Cause what do we <laughs> do like, to oh. detract? I'm so visual. Uh, what do you do that detracts so from the relationships in your life? Mm. Mm. I'm working on this right now with one specific individual. Um. I have to get past my own expectation for that individual. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, this person's very close to me. Um, It's probably me. It's not. (laughs) It's not about you. (laughs) But (laughs) But yeah, so I guess, so what do I, what do I do that detracts from relationships in your life? I forget that the person in front of me has their own free will, their own pathway, their own viewpoint. 
And even though my intention for them might be golden and beautiful and positive in my light, sometimes I hold it against them when they don't meet my expectation. Ouch. Mm. I said that I said that on the internet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I think for me, um, I, I'm, I'm, I have a few, <laughs> I have plenty of issues. I'm in therapy <laughs> also, <laughs> but I think some of the like big problems that I have is I actually, and you probably like wouldn't really get this straight away because I'm such a kind of like caretaking person. So I can really, like, I'm very, I mean, just because of everything I've been through just as an individual, I've, and I've come to, like, see this about myself, that I'm actually a very strong person in terms of when it comes to, like, emotional things. And I can, I'm very good at holding space for people. I'm very good at containing what is happening for them and and just, just holding that with them. I don't have to offer solutions unless they ask for it. It's like that kind of thing. I'm good at that. But what that ends up doing for me is that on my end, I get in this cycle of not being vulnerable myself at all, Mm. where I'm just like, okay, Mm. I'm here. I can take care of you. I've got you. I can also take care of myself. So I'm not going to give you the opportunity Mm. to connect with me in that way. Because it seems like you're really struggling, even though I know, I know intellectually that, you know, like vulnerability is the vehicle of connection and of building relationship, right? Mm. But it's so hard for me to do that sometimes because I almost feel like I'm putting it on the other person too, especially if they have their own issues that they've been vulnerable with me about. So I'm just like, oh, you know, like you couldn't handle the truth Mm. kind of thing. Mm. Like, you know, and, and, and that always creates this distance for me in, in some relationships that I know shouldn't be there. Um, but that's just kind of always my, my go-to. Yeah. I hear that. Yeah. I had a friend tell me, I think she had a similar take and there was a moment where I was doing what you did Mm -hmm. and I'm okay, I'm okay, I got it, I got Mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And she stopped me and she said, letting people help you is a way they show love. Right, I'm the worst. Like you're you're (laughs) preventing them from letting them love you. Right. And I was like, oh. (sighs) That was so hard for me to hear. Yeah. Well, that that principle that like charity is so great, right? Like to to give charity to another human being, to, to help them, to bring them along. I was just explaining this to my children that like, and in that principle, it requires a receiver. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to be that receiver. And Mm -hmm. like like looping back to the idea of community and relationships and all of this, um, our family went through a really trying time. And went through a really trying time. My wife had a miscarriage, a pretty late one. And we don't talk about that in our society, right? So I do. Yeah. I try to talk about it I often. Know. I've heard the story. It's yeah. really powerful. Story. And um, so I want to bring it up. So it requires somebody to be vulnerable. So people that know my wife and I, like we're community builders. We're the ones out there doing the yard work, helping the people, taking the food to the people that need it. You know, yeah. like we're the ones that try to take care of people. And then this happened. And we were not prepared to be on the receiving end of it um, until my dear friend Jenny Ellingson, who's my wife's, you know, best friend. Mm -hmm. Um, She basically pulled the plug on our choice Mm. and was like, you are suffering. I mean, my wife and I were literally just laying in bed together all day long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not even talking to each other, just we couldn't process it. And um, she said, that's that's not happening. That's what I'm here for. I get to be your person. And so she said, I'm throwing a barbecue at your house. <laughs> and like, if you've ever been through a really trying time, like to host a barbecue yeah. at your own house like, is absolutely awful. Not. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> and she called everyone. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I don't know the count. There must have been 30 or 40 people there. And she had a conversation with every single one of them and said, 
you can come and you can cry and you can stand in a corner and you can be uncomfortable, but you will be there mm. for Jake and Julie. Yeah. And, um, woof, dang it. Like, I thought I was going to make it through one of these series without crying on it Cry again. Fest. But it's, it's, it's right at the heart tough. of it. Like, and Jenny Ellingson knows that she's no longer a friend. I don't know what to call her. She's some kind of like angelic mm. inner circle sister family. to our family. family. Yeah, she's family, the family that we get to choose mm -hmm. um, because it required us to give in. Right. It was a really awful, hard barbecue, and there was a lot of crying. Yeah. But the community was there, mm -hmm. you know? And so um, why do we stay so surface level mm -hmm. when we know through experience that just dipping down into that vulnerability, even though it's painful, even though it's vulnerable, even though it's exposing you know, if we've been through it, we know the dividends that it pays. Mm -hmm. We know how important it is. We've mm. felt it. We've been the receiving. So, yeah. Thank yeah. you. You're, thank you. How about you? Yeah. I will ask you the question. The same question? Gonna read what? again. Let's get you a new one. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Jake oh. has the deck. Um, okay, ready? Yes. What would you say is the biggest lesson you are learning these days? Oh. Out. Mm. Okay, I know. Thank you, therapist. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, I think it probably is the same thing that I do that detracts from relationship in my life. Um, I, because of my own life experiences, I tend to know what I need. Yep. Whether that's just instinct or just, I know what I need. I define it. I get it. I make it happen. Um, for example, um, my parents split. My mom started drinking. I saw that. And when I was 11, I told her, hey, I'm going to go live with dad until you stop drinking. Ooh, dang. And... I needed the security, I needed the predictability, the structure that mm -hmm. I viewed as available with dad and not available with mom. Mm -hmm. And on one hand, that's really great. Like, you know, you protected yourself. But what I did was, it was so hurtful to my mom and I abandoned my sister. Yeah. So I often am really clear on like what I need and I get it. And I'm I, unapologetic about it. And that always felt like, good, you know, I'm intentional and I'm authentic and I'm unapologetic. Mm -hmm. I've, I have failed to recognize how that impacts the people that I care about. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I hear like, you're, you're so strong, you're resilient. Like it's, it's these like things that they admire about me. And, and it's, it's a good, you know, you should know what your needs are and go after them, mm -hmm. you know. And there's so many people will let the world walk all over them before right. they stand up for what they need. I don't do that. Great, right? Yeah. But I have, I'm learning that there's another part of it too. Like I have failed to honor the people that I'm walking away from. The, the things I'm letting go hurt. They sometimes hurt other people. And it doesn't mean I don't do it, but I need, I'm learning to recognize their part, like their experience of my knowing mm -hmm. and hold that space for them. I don't have to own it. But right. recognize, I was just very like, like it's your, I know what it's I need problem. and I get it. Yeah, and I think it. one way that I was explaining to Adele this morning about it, like I would, um, I would stand up for myself while standing on top of people. I would smush people oh, yeah. in order to take care of myself. And mm -hmm. that doesn't feel good. That was destroying relationships that were important to me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm learning how to hold both, like care for myself without hurting the people I care about. That's so it is hard. so hard to know the difference between that and the difference between having good boundaries though. Yes. Yeah. That is like such a, I hadn't even really thought about mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah, uh, of seeing it that way. Cause we, I think in the past decade, the, the concept of like toxic people 
right? Sure. Is, you know, yeah. we don't yeah. need toxic people in our life. Right. And the the toxic person might be someone I actually really care about. Yeah. It might be a family member, a friend. Yep. And so you cut them off because you're taking toxic people out of your life mm-hmm. in in protection of you and your needs. Great. Well, you've just, just you possibly just destroyed something you care about. And learning that balance of like, I'm setting this boundary and I'm honoring you at the same time. Right. It's very difficult. And that is the lesson I am learning. That's fantastic. Oh, I really appreciate you sharing that. That is a that. deep one. What a great deck. They are so I love fun. this deck of cards. Like I need to order one for myself. I think they're even just at like Target. Are they? There's a, there's a slightly a different <clears throat> um, version of it that's, like, that's there. Brand, I guess. Yeah. Like there's a, it's called like something about strangers. Like yeah. there's no strangers mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, it's yeah. like question cards, but mm-hmm. well, and, and I've seen some out there, and they're it's almost like they just found a clearinghouse of questions. But this one looks really like curated. Mm-hmm. Like they're good yeah. questions. Yeah. I use these with students sometimes. Yeah, like, I, I bet that opens up a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and again, coming back to their mission, and what I love is like, how do we explore human connection? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm when we live in this constantly changing world, when we exist in this digital atmosphere that is really confusing, yeah. how do we foster like human connection? Yeah. And um, I do love their work. And um, I think that's why I brought it today because it felt really I'm relevant. I'm so glad you did. Oh, that was great. Yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was some some deep stuff. I feel a little exposed. I know. <laughs> She's like, let's see, how can I make Jake how can cry I make on camera Jake again? Cry? How can I make Nathan <laughs> uncomfortable? <laughs> oh my gosh. But in the, but in the best way, because it's sharing things like that, that, that do create the opportunity for deeper connection. Like, yeah, like genuinely I, I've heard Jake's story and that's mm-hmm. part of why I feel so connected mm-hmm. to Jake and we have such a great friendship. We've shared a lot of those moments together. Mm-hmm. And then now we've shared a moment like that with you and that's important and I feel more connected to you. Yeah. And also, you know, being vulnerable is not for everybody. No. You know, just like being sarcastic or being outgoing. It just it's a characteristic that mm-hmm. Doesn't fit everybody. Well, it's excruciating. It's excruciating. <laughs> it's scary. It's scary. And I think it's something we talk about as like, we need to be more vulnerable. Yeah. And yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. And there's ways to connect that isn't just be vulnerable, open up, share a thing. Yeah. Just, I think, but it involves putting your phone down. Mm-hmm. That's the vulnerability. Like, do something uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, you don't have to share personal stories. Like, just put yourself in a different situation yeah. and mm-hmm. see what happens. No expectations. Spend time mm-hmm. undivi- undivided mm-hmm. with someone. Mm-hmm. And it's so much easier just to not. Um, yeah. But I, I, how do I say this? When I was talking to Adele again this morning, we <laughs> really just honed in on this other concept from Jim Rohn. Um, I'm pretty I sure he's the one who said this. Work. But um, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. <laughs> and this is a good one. Constantly, so I, I try to increase my average, if you will. Like yeah. Yeah. I, I learned that quote when I was home with my baby all day. Ooh. I was like, "Wow, yeah, I'm like so isolating. Just me, and yeah. I see my husband sometimes. Mm-hmm. And so, what are things that we can do to constantly like put ourselves around people? Mm-hmm. and different types of people and mm-hmm. like what kind of average do you want to have like what can you learn from people if you're constantly by yourself or just in a silo of like mm-hmm. everything right how do you connect how and do how you do connect? you grow well and i think like mm-hmm. especially students sometimes they don't they don't have that perspective of like possible inroads mm-hmm. yeah. you know so like i went to this summer prog- program between my junior and senior year down at cal arts so like you know the poor little mountain kid went to valencia for the for the summer the summer of the rodney king riots which was interesting Ooh. for like a little paradise kid yeah, this but is like your, two your, weeks your after yeah junior, two weeks senior. after the rodney king riots way back when and um i remember sitting in my dorm room it was the first time i'd really been away from home and it was the very first night I was sitting in the dorm room and I was so like, like lame, like this is stupid. I don't know anybody here, <laughs> right? I'm never going to like this. I mean, if I had a cell phone, I probably would have called my parents and be like, you need to turn around and come get me, right? I texted them. Um, 
Don't. And I remember looking out the dorm room to like a little common area thinking like, oh, everyone else has friends. There was mm. a barbecue going on and and something happened like, you know, like the little angelic bay of light hit me that no one here knew each other. Mm. Actually, right. nobody knew mm. each other because we were all high school students from around uh, the, the state. Mm -hmm. And so I learned a valuable lesson. It was hard. But I remember going down to the barbecue and I walked up to somebody and I said, my name is Jake. I don't know anybody here. Do you want to talk? Mm. And that person was like, oh my gosh, I don't know anybody either. And so since then, you know, wrapping back, I have kind of like a no holds barred approach. Like when I get a I've new student, this. I've seen this. I know here. I You're rope kids in. Like when I get a new student in homeroom, I always make it a point to be like, hey, everybody, this is so-and-so. I've met him just a little bit. We like him. Hey, you, I think you're going to be good for them. I want you to go sit with him and meet him. Just like I'm mm. taking it by the reins. Mm -hmm. You know, I've even been like out and been like, you know, I know a student that has a hard time meeting people, but they're so vibrant and beautiful and they just don't. It's like they 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 don't know that nobody else knows each other, mm -hmm. right? And so I've been like, hey, you, can you come over here? I want you to meet this person. They're brand new here, and they don't know anybody. I just say it out loud. Yeah. And all of a just sudden, the, the person's yeah. like, oh my gosh, I remember when I came here. I didn't know anybody here. Let me show you around. You know. I don't think they would even you know name the thing to to do what you did. No, they don't yeah. because that, we have phones and because we yeah. can just escape. Yeah in various ways. Yeah, I'm gonna go connect with some other thing that I feel like I'm connecting with yes. yeah. instead of doing this scary hard thing yeah. of that's literally just saying hello to someone. Mm. But <laughs> Yeah, so I almost <laughs> think like, like how much of, you uh, know, like following our three episode path, you know, from us as children to us as mentors, and now that maybe part of that knowledge is saying you don't know how to make a connection yeah. You don't know that it's okay to be vulnerable. You don't know these things. So let me help those, mm -hmm. you know, like back to that idea of actively building, at putting energy actively into a system to, to shape it the way that is healthier instead of letting it fall to chaos. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe as educators, part of our, you know, lighthouse, our lamp, our beacon is to do the uncomfortable side for a student. Sure. You know, and just a little bit. A little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, bit. you got to know your students because yeah. there are some kids that just would be yeah. horrified. That's true. But actually, even sometimes the ones that are horrified need it the most. They, I have oh, a little, it's true. I have a little mm -hmm. anecdote for it's this. It's true. So I've never done this before. This is the, for my first time doing this. I was actually like playing matchmaker as mm. a high school teacher. And it's kind of one of the perks of the job. <laughs> you just gonna be like, I hear this. There's like where's this going? chemistry there. Do you guys yeah. know each other? So I have this student right now that I've gotten to know uh, quite well. And then another student that I've gotten to know quite well, but they're in two very different spheres. Like they don't really overlap with each other at all. Um, but then I'm also the yearbook advisor. And so I was like, hey, why don't you um, interview this person? Oh, nice. <laughs> do a profile on them it would be great I think it would be really because they really like the, this other student they're very interesting and so I was actually in my room when this interview was happening cute. and it was adorable it was Aww. so cute like the chemistry was just there and then like a couple weeks later I was like so who's who are you taking to prom or whatever and they're like oh, oh. I don't know and I'm like you know who you should take to prom <laughs> is this person that clearly likes you. And they're like, I really, I have a crush on them. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, Make it happen. Make it happen. Did it happen? Get it. Yeah. Oh, they're they're actually so cute. going for on a date on Tuesday oh, next gosh. week. Connection. <laughs> yeah. Connection. The, the student's yeah. like, you yeah. want to hear about how it goes? I'm like, yeah, I want to hear about how it goes. Yes. Yeah. To a certain this degree. This is awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's a certain degree. <laughs> right. Like, you're like, yeah, no, I want, you know, yeah. like, I, I care about you and I care about the way that you connect with people. And, and these two students in particular, they're, they're like way more IS. So they're, mm, they're pretty mm, isolated. Mm just as young people too. Yeah. So there's like, there's that extra barrier of, I actually don't even know how to mm -hmm. show romantic interest in someone, or I don't know how to even begin to make that connection. Um, and yeah, just, yeah. just trying to like, okay, this is an active thing. You have to participate in this. There's, there's no like 
Is that the being scaffold? afraid of this? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But here's here's the scaffold for you, and this is this is how this is gonna go. You know. Um, That's yeah, sweet. I, I love that. I love that idea. It's of true. That. Mm -hmm. It's so true. And there's probably like. I'm gonna I'm gonna be so judgmental here. There's probably like elementary teachers out there that are like, I would never. And then there's high school teachers that are like, yeah, that's totally what happens. You know, like there's, so, there's totally different. Um, there's I have yeah. a group of students now that get like dating advice from me, which you know you gotta be really careful. You know, <laughs> right, right. But it's more like social. It's really okay. funny. Like okay. this one, this one student comes and he's like, hey, car, like this is what's going on. What should I do for on a date? Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, I was thinking about just like going to a movie. And I'm like, well, that's lame. Yeah, don't They're do like, that. Why? Well, what's the point of a date? <laughs> I don't know. To hang out? Uh huh. Are you gonna, sure. I was like, are you gonna be the jerk and talking in the go. film? Are you gonna talk? You know? Yeah. And so yeah. I was like, how You're about this? Talk. And how about I like, this? I was like, what's Ooh. the other person like? They're like, oh, this was. I'm like, cool. I was like, go to a coffee shop downtown and go to the bookstore. Mm. Mm. You know, and, and the, it's so funny because now they come back and and there's this little table in one of my classes and and the one will frequently bring it up and the other's like, oh my gosh, are you really asking Car for dating advice? That oh, is sweet. so weird. Yep. And he's like, no, it's good. Yep. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> no, it's good, man. But you know, and, and going up. back to, you know, one of the other <laughs> parts of the series we talked about, sometimes you have to do that a little bit uncomfortable, unsafe thing yeah. as a teacher. Right. And like, I'm never going to give like dating advice. Right. But like, no, that's a little on the fringe there. There are some teachers yep. that mm -hmm. are thinking right now, absolutely not. I would mm -hmm. never share anything about my personal life or like I would never right, right, get right. into the personal life of a high school student, things like yeah, that. But, but like yeah. doing, you know, sometimes getting into that, just into the realm of uncomfortable mm -hmm. can be super meaningful for, mm -hmm. for people. Yeah. You know. Can I ask you guys a question? Please. Mm -hmm. You've both given really good examples on like the opportunities to scaffold, right? And like mm -hmm. build that bridge. What like advice would you give to students around relationships and connection? Like if you were to say something to them and impart wisdom. The future leaders of the like world. Are like romantic relationships? No, <laughs> just, just like relationships. <laughs> don't like, do it. Yeah, don't fall. You know, do what I say, not what I do. I guess. Um, <laughs> in the in the in the world of connection, like no, being able to connect yeah. with people. Uh, I would. I do say. I frequently tell students, everyone feels uncomfortable about their vulnerability, mm -hmm. and also everyone wants to be seen and heard as a human being. Um, and then I go back to like, there was that movie that was like, it takes 30 seconds of courage. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? No. Somebody out there is like, oh, I love that movie and I can't, I can't <laughs> think of it. Reference. Right. It takes like 30 seconds of courage to change the world. Mm. Mm. And so mm. that's what I would say. It's like, first off, recognize that everybody wants connection on some level. So find those people and it takes a moment of uncomfortability because what you're saying is you're saying I'm lacking to somebody to a little bit. You're saying like, I'm lacking a relationship with you right now. Mm -hmm. And I would like to have that. To have a connection to you. Yeah. You seem cool. You seem cool. Um, what would you say? Actually, probably a very similar thing. Um, one of the most impactful things actually in like my like teacher training, uh, came to me from a mentor of mine, Thea Wolf, who was at Chico state. And I was a very young person to be pursuing teaching at the college level. <laughs> so it was like, I was very, not much of a degree of separation between me and my own students at the time. Mm. And I was so in that like chaotic phase of your 20s where you are really also creating your identity at the same time. So you're in a very liminal space. And I hadn't really considered what liminal meant or even anything, but I, I, I was voicing concern around that to her. And I was just like, I don't, like I can't project this kind of confidence mm -hmm. I don't have. I can't pretend to be someone that I'm not. And she was like, Nathan, that's your the greatest asset for you as a teacher mm -hmm. because all of your students are experiencing the exact same thing mm -hmm. that you're experiencing. And if you can hold on to that and you remember what that feels like mm -hmm. and you're honest about it 
and you're open, your students will open up to you as well and they'll learn from you because of the fact that you're honest about that. That was huge. I hadn't considered that that was an asset. I always thought that that was something that was bad, that that I was negative about me, that I was bringing Mm -hmm. with me, the fact that I had so much insecurity. But the fact really was that the insecurity was the power to build connection. Mm -hmm. Whereas like if I was able to offer that and be honest about it and be upfront about it, then that would open a door. Mm -hmm. And I just hadn't considered that. So that's what I would say. It's just like, yes, very similar to what Jake said. Like the opportunity for connection is uh, like it's, it's in vulnerability. It's in sharing those like really scary moments where, cause we're all afraid. Mm. We're all, we all think that we're not what we're supposed to be, Mm. but that's just, just acknowledge that. I'm like acknowledgement and relating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Relatability. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're a great teacher. Oh, you You really are. You are too, Jake. Thanks. Feel good moment here on what teachers have to say. (laughs) I really admire you. Yeah, I do. Thank you. Um, well, I have loved today. I loved this whole three part mini series. It's been yeah. hard. It has been a tough one. There's so much vulnerability. It's been this hard. One. I had a student actually pull yeah. me aside. Uh, you know who you are. Um, you know, students often say like, "Hey, I listened to the pod. That was cool, Car." You know, and like mm-hmm. you've had it too. You had somebody oh, yeah. stop you in a mall. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, the first of this mini series um, <clears throat> dropped a week ago. Mm-hmm. Week, uh, just about a week ago, and it, there was it. It was hard, actually. I really mm-hmm. almost hesitated putting it out there because there was so much vulnerability. It was. It was, it was actually hard for me to edit. I can. I only was like imagine. listening to, it and I was like, Ah, oh, do I want to leave that in there? Yeah, like that's raw. Yeah, but I appreciated it. I, yeah. You know, I was struggling with. I know you were the news and yeah. and the lack of acknowledgement yeah. that this. Yes this common occurrence, this common tragedy is not normal. No. Right. And just literally feeling that, whether it's public or private, like giving ourselves permission to feel, Mm -hmm. I felt was lacking. And here's an opportunity to to do that. And to and you do it publicly, which is way publicly. Which gives even more permission. And I really yeah, I was struggling and I just appreciate anyone who's willing to acknowledge raw and real life that hurts sometimes. It does hurt sometimes. Does. Well, and like looking at this arc of this little mini series that we've done, you know, so this student that I brought up, um, only one student has mentioned that they listened to it, yeah. which is different. It There's usually different. like their notification goes off and, and they listen to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one student who's very a feeling, a feeling person, yeah. we know this student, yeah. uh, kind of waited until a, a class was over, until it was private, and said, hey, I listened to the first, I listened to your episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and they said, it was really brave for you to be so vulnerable on the internet. Yeah. I thought, there we, okay, we're good. We're mm-hmm. good. I'm, we made the right choice. We did we the, right the right thing. Yeah. Um, there, people are, well, you know, we, this is what teachers have to say. Mm-hmm. We have to say, do the hard thing, build the relationship, be vulnerable, you know, peel back your skin mm-hmm. a little bit and show mm-hmm. them that you bleed mm-hmm. so that they, when they need to bleed, they can do that too. And I'm really only talking metaphorically. <laughs> um, Thanks for but that. But I just, <laughs> I just really appreciate it. So just to wrap up, Brittany, I'm, I am, I want to just really say how grateful I am for your entire being at our school. We've hung out socially. We've hung out professionally. Um, You are a top tier individual. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because of the work you've done, the inner work, the hard work, it shines through. and so I'm just really grateful that you were here, that you could share that with our listeners. And it's such an important thing out there. I was thinking, um, you know, we don't talk a lot about PBIS in our, in our school. 
Okay, but PBI, yeah. PBIS is out there and it gets a really bad rap, but I'm hoping that maybe somebody out there that's working on that um, is listening and they could infuse this idea of a wellness team mm. into their tier one response, this just lifting the entire armada of students out there, mm. right? Like just lifting the whole thing, showing them you do such a beautiful job of, of providing space, providing contexts, for very individual students to interact socially. So right. I just really I just really appreciate those. Thank you. So, I, yeah. It's mutual and being part of a a wellness team in a community that not only is open to it but values it mm -hmm. and supports it and feeds it mm -hmm. is unfortunately uncommon mm -hmm. in education uh, it is. i think theoretically we all love this and believe in it but in practice it's a little bit more rare to have this much support in yeah. this world in this yeah. uh and money behind space it. and money behind They've it. hired people there are salaries being paid to do this mm -hmm. yep. and so being able to put you know wear this hat you know personally and professionally and in a public space like this and just model you know you said if there's someone out there who can, um, I forget what you said, but I wanted to add, like we also model these things, yeah. model being vulnerable and doing the hard things, not yeah. just teach it. Yep. Um, that's, there's an opportunity to do this. Yeah. And today's about connection and relationships. And as much as you are all over social media and the internet, like, and I'm not like, I will come and sit next to you and talk to you. And even though yeah. it's in a public, date or digital world like we're in person right now Absolutely. and i will i'm always a yes like we're gonna get together and talk yes, yes and so it. those opportunities don't come very often and i appreciate that you provided one with me so thank uh, you thank you um if anybody out there is listening is interested in contacting you what is that what is an appropriate <laughs> way no because yeah. I, and and you laugh but i want you to know that what you have to offer there are people listening right now that are really jealous of it Mm. at a school oh yeah really jealous and so um or I don't, maybe jealous isn't the right yeah, word but like, like oh, admiring would, like wow like what a pro mm. you know how do we do that well we know when people come to our campus they always we you know when emissaries when the county when people come to our campus mm. they always mm -hmm. mention right. like yeah. wow like your community is really great yeah and that doesn't just happen it's people like you that are building that space well, that's really twofold. I, there's what I bring personally, and I can share that information, but as a department, as a wellness team, I have to give a ton of credit to Colleen and Amber, who sure. definitely created the structure and model of this year, and they brought it to admin, they got admin support. So yeah. um, they really had this structure, and I got to be in it. And so I bring myself into it, of course, but... Um, yeah. uh, I'm not on social media. That's okay. <laughs> Give me my phone number and you can no. text me. Uh, Maybe if people are interested, Ooh. they could contact us through any of our yeah. social media and we could put them in contact with you. Yeah, and maybe yeah. I can put my email sure. in, my personal email as well. I don't mind sharing that. Um, email and text is like the way to contact me. Okay. Um, or just come over, we'll talk. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Just so we'll find put, you. We'll, yeah. Put, uh, we'll put something in the show notes <laughs> and yeah. then people that are... Uh, on an only audio situation, you can contact us through many different yes. opportunities and we'll connect you with um, the incredible Brittany Young. Thank you. Yeah. Mahalo. Mahalo. <laughs> Mahalo.